Hello munchkins and viewers alike, it's me Munchie and welcome back to a haul video with a special rant at the end or maybe the beginning. I don't know if I want to put this at the beginning or the end. Actually, let's just get it off of my chest because I've been holding onto this since this morning and I just want to get it set. So before we get into the small animal haul that I have a bunch of Christmas goodies in here, especially for my hamsters because I've been spoiling at my rescue my foster animals, I have yet to spoil my animals so they won't be receiving any of this until Christmas but this is mainly just for them so I have two remaining for those of you who've been following along crackle and Hannibal are my last remaining personal hamsters Sahara did pass away and Reinhardt did pass away I mentioned this in another video uh, if you did not happen to see that video now you are aware they did pass away this year and so I bought goodies for them but this place I went to is an issue <sighs> So let me explain. For those of you who are aware, yes, I am in Washington, hello, but I do shop at pet stores. And when I do, I sometimes will shop at Petco and PetSmart. Those are like the two biggies out here. But there are times when I would stop by, say a mom and pop store or a not so corporate store. So the areas around here that I've gone to is Sierra Fish and Pets. I've gone to Denny's Pet World. I've gone to Midway Tropical Fish and Pets. And it turns out Midway Tropical Fish and Pets just opened up a new store store at a different location. And that is the store that I shopped at today with this bag here. But there is a downside to shopping at these stores because what you see inside may not be appealing, especially for the small animal care. This place I thought at first was just going to contain reptiles and fish, but it wasn't until the very end of my browsing in the store for the very first time that I even noticed they had a small animal section. It was really pitiful. But let me just tell you exactly what happened. I wanted to try this place out. I wanted to see what it was like. Since I knew it was owned by Midway Tropical Fish and Pets, I was hoping it would be a big improvement for that type of store because unfortunately, I can tell you the animals in their care especially the small animals are neglected and mistreated and are just feeder small animals and they are constantly multiplying and they do not give a damn. So now that I said that, I was hoping since this is a new place and they advertise on Facebook and they seem all nice and friendly and the store looks cleaner, a lot cleaner than their first store, I thought, yeah, maybe I'll give this place a chance. I go in and the shelves are big. It's a huge place but they don't have a lot stocked on their shelves. Now, whether it be this time of year or from what I've heard, this place just doesn't really keep a big supply on hand and they don't have a lot of different supplies. They have a general supply for cats, general supply for dogs, and then the small animals gets a bit iffy. There's not really a whole lot, but they dedicate their time a lot to fish because it is tropical fish and pets. So I went in the back and all I saw was really disgusting care, but they did have a lot of different shoe toys and different brands that are not usually in Petco and PetSmart. I was looking at the reptile section and the reptiles, the living reptiles are in the way back. Their setups look pretty good. I mean, everything in there was babies, extremely small babies, the water dragons, there was two into an enclosure and the enclosure wasn't big enough for an adult, but they were this size, the water dragons. And that is scary to know how young they are at that store because what if, and I don't know their policy, what if they sold them that young? Are they holding them? But on the sales floor, it literally said bearded dragon for their price tag. So it does, cause concern for me that they are misusing their animals as just sale points and sale items. But I was like, you know what? They have decent setups for their size for right now. Hopefully if they do get any bigger that they will upgrade, but I'm not aware, I don't know. Their fish section was being taken care of by multiple people. And so there was a lot of people over there, not so much with the reptiles in the back. But when I was making my way up front after picking out all these items, I then saw to the left side, the small animals. And there was two gerbils in a 10 gallon tank one Syrian hamster in a 10 gallon tank, another Syrian hamster in a 10 gallon tank. All they had in there was water, food bowl, and crinkle bedding. And the crinkle bedding is not really a good bedding. It's more of a bedding plus, I want to say, where it provides different texture and benefits, but it should not be used as a main housing bedding. But they were selling this crinkle bedding in the back and they were selling them in big bags too. And at first I thought, oh, this is pretty cool because I see people use this crinkle bedding. But when I saw them in the 
enclosure. It was just kind of heartbreaking, but it looked clean, but there was no wheels. All of them were being housed in a 10 gallon tank and there was um, starter cages for their guinea pigs and a rabbit, what looked like almost a fully grown adult rabbit, almost. I don't believe it was an adult rabbit, but this rabbit was in a guinea pig starter cage, one of those really small cages, and he was just flopped over. And he was flopped over in a corner, and it looked very uncomfortable, and I said, you poor thing, oh my gosh. And there was no price tag for the rabbit, all it said was guinea pigs, hamsters, and gerbils. I don't know why it's here. I don't know why they're keeping it in a tiny enclosure. They have two guinea pigs per enclosure that they had, and the guinea pigs looked healthy. They all looked healthy. I gave a good look at them. The gerbils, however, look like adult gerbils, and they might have been there for a while, but as I was going to the front, I said, excuse me, miss, why don't you guys have wheels inside your enclosures? And at first she didn't hear me completely and she thought I meant, why don't you have wheels? And so she's like, oh no, the wheels are all the way in the very back and those wheels were terrible. There was no solid wheels. They had mesh metal wheels. Oh, I wish I should have filmed this. I wasn't thinking, I, I wanted to film this. I'm gonna try to pull as much photos and videos as I can from their website. It was pretty disappointing what they were selling, especially since there was no big enclosures for them at all back there. But when I said, oh no, 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 not those wheels. I meant, why don't you guys have uh, wheels inside their enclosure? Oh, well, unfortunately wheels cause them to fight. So we take them out. And then I paused and was like, wait, but these guys are foragers and they need a wheel in there 24 seven. Why aren't you guys providing? Oh, well, um, and that's when she started getting very defensive. And I understand, I even let her know, hey, I know it's not you, it's your company you work for. So she got really defensive and she says, well, they're just temporary tanks and we give them a lot of love and tension and we take them out and we care for them. Honestly, I didn't see any chew toys in there, but their bedding was piled pretty high and some some tanks, I couldn't tell if there was multiple Syrians in there or not, but when I was told that the reason why they don't have wheels inside their enclosures is because they have paired Syrians or paired gerbils, that caused a really big concern. They didn't have any mice. They just had Syrians and gerbils, no dwarf hamsters at all. And so when hearing her defend that, oh, they're just temporary, that that's such a pet store response because I used to work at pet store and I understood her where she was coming from, where customers, when they questioned you and they questioned, you know, how you kept them in there, you unfortunately could not respond a specific way, but oh, at my pet store, I let people be clear. They are not suitable and it breaks my heart. So that's why I like to educate my customers if you see what you see, that's not appropriate care. And so that's why I'm here communicating with you and blah, blah, blah. When she put up that defensive barrier claiming that, you know, they fight if they have a wheel in there, which is devastating to know that they have nothing to get their energy and stress levels out. They're just in there. They are just items on display. Oh, they're just temporary tanks. Oh, that made me so mad. So after that, I said, well, I just hope that you guys are telling your customers that they do need to have a wheel in there. And then she's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, we do. And then she says, usually I tell customers a 20 gallon tank or a 40 gallon breeder is suitable for them. And then I had to stop <laughs> because 20 gallons are not acceptable. The two gerbils that were there, sure. That is minimum, but it is pitiful minimum. That is like an emergency minimum. But yeah, sure for a gerbil, but for hamsters, when she says she recommended that, I was like, well, for hamsters, 40 gallon breeder, yes. But 20 gallon long tanks is only 360 square inches and that's underneath the minimum requirement of 450. So then she starts talking about her animal and I, I know this is a way to kind of make it better, a better situation so that like I don't leave as an angry customer, but I already am because they don't give a shit about their small animals at all. They use them as display pieces, which is disgusting to me and they don't actually sell proper wheels to begin with or enclosures for that matter. And she says, well, you know, I have a hamster at home and I found using the exercise ball and it's just it came out of nowhere she just mentioned exercise ball because I guess we were talking about wheels but she says I done research and you know I don't like using them and I've had past experiences where my animals got them stuck inside the slits bad experience exercise balls and then she starts talking about well she has a big playpen and everything and I you know 
I, I said that's awesome because it is. Because we're trying to move people towards play pins and free roaming rather than exercise balls where yes, that can happen and I don't know exactly what type of hamster she had. Just trying to make amends for the whole situation. I actually spoke up and asked them, hey, so uh, I really like the Preview 528 cage. I noticed you guys don't have a lot of small animal cages in the back. Would you guys be open to ordering them if I placed in an order for them, if I requested them? And she says, oh, well, we're a distribution center. So in the very back of the entire store is where they distribute to multiple, multiple pet stores and that it wouldn't be price-wise a good idea to order a specific type of cage because they would be losing money. And so that to me, just hearing those responses of like, no, we're not gonna even try. No, this is not how we function here. It was not a friendly pet store-like environment. This is a business. This is a distribution center that is being run like a pet store, but is mainly a distribution center. So hearing that, seeing the product on the shelf, seeing how disappointing everything looked and seeing how how they provided, even though I told her, we only need to be 24 seven in the enclosure because they run five to 10 miles at night and she acknowledged that they are foragers and run that much, she excused their need for that wheel as, oh, well, they're fighting and so we took it out, but we handled them, they're temporary enclosures. No, if you can provide your reptiles with appropriate care, even though they are very small right now and I don't know what you would be providing them once they got bigger and you're doing a lot for your fish tanks because it's mainly a fish store and then you are just tossing your small animals to the side, not really caring about their needs. This is their need. If you let customers buy those animals and they are stressed because of course they're not gonna get any free roaming time, you're gonna spend 10 minutes probably handling them. 10 minutes in the morning handling them. Wanna know why I know that? Woohoo! Person who used to work at that store. <sighs> there is specific ways of running a business. At this point, these mom and pop pet stores that I've been to, they've all been pretty bad. And I just hate the fact that I might have to be on Petco and PetSmart's side because they at least hold standards. You don't know how many times when I've had to literally tell somebody, hey, don't put a metal wheel in here, even though I know PetSmart still does for some of their C and B type stores because they have a ranking of stores and which stores are performing more. It's within the companies, it's with every company. But anyways, just telling people, hey, don't use metal wheels, trying to get them replaced inside of enclosure. It was just awful being like, hey, this specific animal is hurting themselves when running on this wheel. You need to upgrade it or you need to switch it out. It was such a struggle and mom and pop stores really do not give a damn. So I know you guys want me to film inside of a pet store. I'm by myself a lot of these times and it's awkward doing so. So hopefully by me telling you about my experience that you will understand why I'm so frustrated. Midway Tropical Fish and Pets, when I went in, it was just a breeder colony for the small animals where they would always get in guinea pigs that were pregnant or they have their gerbils constantly reproducing back there, sleeping on their babies. It was a nightmare. And this to me is not a pet store if you really don't value the small animals at all, which these stores do not because they run themselves more like a corporation than Petco and PetSmart, which is a larger, bigger corporation. They have standards. These small mom and pop stores do not have standards. So if anybody's in Washington state, there are people there suggesting different pet stores around the area that I should check out. And honestly, a lot of the mom and pop stores, they they are the most disappointing things I've ever seen. I, I just, I have nothing positive to say about the pet stores that I have gone to besides their inventory and what they have because they mainly focus on that rather than their pet care. So let me show you what I got because we're just gonna breeze right through this. I got the Hula Chew right here and it hangs like so. Thought it was fun and colorful. These are items that I usually don't see anywhere else, so that's why I got them. We have the large wilderness chews. Colorful crop of chews from the wild. I didn't really realize that they were colorful, but now that I'm looking at it, you can kind of see on the sides here. One looks like a darker green, yellow, and red, but this looked pretty natural when I saw it, but then I didn't realize it that they were colorful chews, but hopefully they are safe. It says, we care, important this pet chew is not intended for children. <laughs> natural, safe, natural. I'm seeing a lot of natural, so maybe natural dyes. We have a little chew rainbow wreath. I thought this was adorable. Look how, look how cute that is. And then I, I'm so thankful I found one of these, the hay house. My animals love the hay house and it's so sad when they chewed it all up because I couldn't find another hay house. And we have a 
corny carrot. Corny carrot. Oh, how corny is this carrot, guys? It's <laughs> play on pun words. Really cute. I thought that maybe if my animals didn't like that, that that would also be a good toss and chew for the guinea pigs because you know how much they like to play. I found this and I've never seen it before. It says Critter Bus. Critter loves to crawl into and chew on the cardboard school bus. Crawl into? There is nowhere for them to crawl into. This is like a cat cardboard, you know, a scratching post. There's no holes. So I don't know what they're talking about when they say they can crawl into it, but this is just kind of a cool jungle gym type piece. It's good to have these in there. Gives the animals some fun things to do. This one you can crawl into because it's open right here, but I got the barn. It has two doors. So yes, you can crawl inside of it. I would have to open up and see, hey, this could be used as a hide. So that's cool. Uh, the next one we got, which was very interesting, the Lofa Sport Naturally Safe Chewable Play Toys, which is in a baseball and a football. And the football's purple. And I'm just, I look at it, it's so nice, it matches almost. I thought this was really neat. I thought maybe guinea pigs would like this if my animals don't like it, but they're very solid and very heavy. I like that. I got another hay house, but it's called the Hay Hut. Never tried the Hay Hut before. I will be testing it out with the animals, seeing who likes it. And the last thing was a treat ball. And I am specifically getting this for the guinea pigs because they chewed up their other treat ball. They really love playing with it so much that they chewed it up and now they need a new ball. So this is for them. So thank you guys for listening to my little rant today and also seeing the haul, the Christmas haul that I got for my animals. I will not be shopping at Tropical Fish and Pets anymore here in Washington State. I might pop in and do, if I ever do, kind of like a review or just maybe browsing through and showing you guys exactly what I'm talking about with these poor animals because I don't have any pictures for you guys. But if you are local to this area and you've been there and you've seen the shit that goes on inside this place, in both locations now. I don't shop there, don't shop there. I'm not gonna shop there. I'm glad that I went in once and that's enough. That's enough for me. I'm not gonna support that, especially if they don't change. And I heard uh, when they first opened up, they kept guinea pigs and rabbits in the same enclosure. So that is a really big problem because they have two different dietary needs and they're two different species that should not be mingling together. You can cause your guinea pig to have a lot of bone disease because they're not getting enough vitamin C, because you're not providing enough, because they're eating the rabbit food and or they're just only providing one food, which is the rabbit food. And when I went in, the Rabbits were separate from the guinea pigs, but they were in their really closed off, isolated enclosures. Not cool. So if you like today's haul and rant, hit like to show support, comment down below with anything you like to say about your local pet stores and if they're good at all, or if they're just a complete catastrophe. And if you're new here and would like to become a part of the Mexican family, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next videos. Bye-bye.